Aloha everybody, it's me Doc here. Welcome to the first of many to come videos from the unofficial Apple weblog designed to help you better use your Mac. Today, we are gonna to talk to you about filtering spam from mail.app. Mail.app, your favorite application you'll find down here in the bottom of most people's tray. You open it up and you'll see your mail window. And of course, naturally, you'll see there is always spam. If you got email, you got spam. It's just the way it works. I'm going to show you how to get in there and do things a little bit better. First thing you'll know is mail.app has built in spam filtering. I'm going to show you how to first make sure you have it on and then show you how to get more out of it. Let's open up the preferences. Now you can do this by going into preferences or just as you can see, press command comma. You want to go to junk mail filtering and make sure that is enabled. Now, there's other options in here that many people never look at, but I suggest you give it a look and see what works best for you. One of the first options is to mark mail as junk, but leave it in my inbox. The second option is to move it to a junk mailbox. And you'll see as I turn this on, it toggles a junk mailbox here on the side. It sort of moves it back and forth. Okay. The other one is to provide custom actions, but we'll save that for an advanced video. Now, some of the other options available to you are if the sender is in your address book or now called contacts, it will automatically exempt that person from the junk mail filter and allow you to see the message. It also says if the sender of the message is in your previous recipients list. If someone sent you a message before and you've responded to them back and forth, chances are you really need to speak with that person. So junk mail will allow that to come straight through to your inbox. Now, the last one, I have a tendency to turn it off. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to tell you to turn it on. And it says if a message is addressed to you using your full name, most spammers find a way to send you messages from yourself and they leak their way into your computer as spam. Now, for me, I often send myself messages as reminders and things, so I have a tendency to allow that through, but you can turn that on or off as needed. Now, the last one is probably one of the most important ones, and it says to trust the junk mail headers in the message. If you use Comcast or Time Warner Cable or Gmail or you know, iCloud, some of the other services out there, those servers have really good spam filters built in and they will do a little deciding on their end before it ever sees your mailbox. So the goal is to trust these guys to make good decisions for you. So you're going to want to turn that on. Now, taking this a step further, I'm going to show you how to create some rules that will allow you to filter this a lot better. Let me go ahead and close this for a second. You'll see down here on the bottom, I've created a new mailbox called Spamish. I'm going to go ahead and delete that for a second and I'll put it back just so you can see how I did it. Down here on the bottom, there is a plus sign. You click create new mailbox and you can name it. In this case, I've already named it Spamish, so I'll leave it there. I'm not sure why it didn't delete, but I'll leave it there for now. So there's my new mailbox, and I'm gonna call it Spam-ish. Things that may be spam, but I'm not sure what to do with them just yet. So once that's complete, I'm going to go ahead and open up my preferences again, and I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple settings. Before we create this rule, let me show you in the viewing panel, which you'll see here is the fifth one over. You wanna make sure that under this middle section here, you have display remote HTML images turned off. Now, the reason for that is there's a thing in spam known as sending you a web bug. And it can be a piece of code or a little teeny one pixel by one pixel transparent JPEG that when you look at that message, whether you read it or not, for that brief second that you load it, it tells the spammer that you are an alive active email user and therefore they'll take your address and add it to list of known working addresses and you'll get more spam. So you want to leave that turned off so that when you click on a spam message, it doesn't say, yes, that person is real. Now let's take you a little bit further and step over here to the last button, which you'll see is rules and we're going to click rules and I'm going to show you how to recreate this rule that I set up called maybe spam. Now you can name it anything you want um, just by typing in here, but I'm gonna say this is name, this is name maybe spam. First you wanna check, there's two selections here in the first selector and it's any or all. I'm going to select all for now. 
and then I'm going to come over to content type. Now, when you first get in, you won't see content type. You're only going to see from, to, CC, and subject. What you have to do is scroll down to the bottom here, and you'll see something named edit header list. You're going to release that, and you're going to add this plus mark, and you're going to do content type like I did. Again, I believe you have to make sure this is all capital. I'm not sure. I just always done it that way, so trust me. This way works. Content dash type. Select OK. Now I'm going to select content type from the list and it's going to select contains as my Boolean rule. And then I'm going to make sure that this part says multi part related and you're just going to go ahead and type that in multi part related. Now, normally when you set a rule, you only have one line. So you're going to need to plus, press the plus mark in order to get a new line. And I'm going to scroll down here into the middle and select sender is not in my contacts. Now, once you do that, it says, if the message fits any of these criteria, let's perform one of the following actions. The action I'm going to choose is to move this message to a mailbox, and the mailbox I have picked is known as Spamish. So, as that mailbox is there, when I select OK, any messages that come in that contain a web bug or an image spam will automatically get filtered. Now you see, I have a nice clean looking inbox here. And as I scroll down, there is one message from SoundCloud. Now I happen to like SoundCloud. So what I want to do is make sure that my folder, uh, my sorry, my filter isn't labeling this as junk. So what I want to do is make sure it seems like it's already caught it. It caught its own mistake, but normally there here in the top is a not junk button and I'll show you that in a second but the first thing I want to do is knowing that this is a good message I'm gonna go ahead and say load images and now since I had that automatically load inline HTML images off it will reach out to SoundCloud server or whoever they're using as their mail service and they'll send me the images and I can see my nice pretty message now if I look over here into the junk mail folder I'll see here's a message from my buddy John and you'll see here there's load images and there's not junk well in this particular case I know that John is my friend and I would like to see this message that he sent me from store envy so I can go ahead and press load images now to make sure that I can see these in the future I'll go ahead and select this as not junk now sometimes your automatic mail filtering will mislabel things as junk when they're not my friend Lori here sent me something about getting my March Madness brackets on. So I'm going to go ahead and select that as not junk. Now, what will happen, the more that you use it, it will realize those people are, you know, OK to get messages from and they'll let them in. But the best way to do this is to ensure that you check your junk mail folder, something that is not junk, like my receipt from Nordstrand's, I can select as not junk. My Birchbox mail, I can also select as not junk. And it will go ahead and add those to my known good sender list. Now, that's basically it for mail.app. Again, let's review this real quick. You want to make sure in your junk mail settings that you do have it enabled. And to me, the best option is move it to a junk mail box and make sure these middle three and the last selector are selected. You want to go into viewing and make sure display remote HTML messages is turned off. And last, you want to create a rule that will look for image spam and make sure it doesn't allow those things to make it into your folder. There are other types of rule you can add, like a, a quick one is, I can say if any recipient, I'm sorry, if from contains, uh, let's pick something to be a known spam like Russia. You know, if I wanna say anything comes from a .ru address, I wanna go ahead and have that move the message to the spamish folder. And now any messages that come to me, say from Russia with love, will no longer be seen as real message and I won't have to look at that anymore. Okay, so I'll go ahead and select that. I'll end up turning that off because I do have friend from Russia that sends me message, but that's another way you can do by selecting country of origin. Okay, now let's talk to you a little bit about some of the other things that are out there. One is don't use mail.app at all because if the mail doesn't make it to your computer, 
the spam really doesn't do much. It can't really harm your computer. So one way is to use your iCloud servers. Now, my favorite, and this was really hard to come up with answers for this video because I have pretty much decided to send everything through Gmail and let Gmail do all the thinking because it's really, really good at chomping away at spam. And there's utilities, which I'll show you in a second, that can make that even better. I know some people do not like giving Gmail all of their information so they think so they don't want to use Gmail. If that's the case, if you're really insistent on using Mail.app, you might want to look at a nice third party utility like SpamSiv. SpamSiv is $30 and it comes from uh, ccommand.com and this is a very popular app. Most of the major Mac bloggers have written about this at one time or highly used this. Uh, I did use it when I was a mail.app fan, but now that I've moved over to Gmail, I don't use it as much anymore, but it's definitely something that you should take a look at. There is a free trial, but remember it does cost you $30. Small price to pay when you count the amount of time wasted filtering through spam messages. Now, my recommendation is I use an application known as SaneBox. SaneBox is an online application that basically takes the mail when it comes in, sorts it out, and puts it in proper boxes to sort of take your processing time down. The neat thing about this is it runs through spam amazingly. Hey, hello, Brian. Brian's a good friend of mine. Uh, as we scroll down here, you'll see one of the things that I really enjoy is it works everywhere. That's mail.app, Outlook, Sparrow, Gmail, Exchange, iCloud, Yahoo, you name it, it totally works. The way it works is it does some smart filtering, so it reads the messages and it decides where they go, and it places them in a manner so that you can focus your attention on the messages that matter most. One of my favorite features is something known as saying black hole. So if I get a message from, who knows, selling me strange knockoff iPhone cases, I can drag that message into a same black hole folder and it automatically goes to trash, but it also unsubscribes me from that mailing list with a simple click. Some of the other things that it does is it allows me follow-up reminders and defer email into a later date where I can look at it later. So I can use saying tomorrow or saying next week, and next week I'll get that message back and I can say, okay, yeah, now it's time to write my brother-in-law about you know, family vacation or football trip. Now, same box costs five dollars a month but one of the things that you'll really see which is cool is as you use it and you start referring people to it they will give you credit that then you can use to keep your service going i've been using same box for over a year now and i've never paid more than the initial five bucks because the more people that sign up the more referral that i get and i swear everyone that i've turned on to it so far loves it my fellow to our person Brett Terpster, he also uses it. He'll tell you firsthand, this is definitely the greatest way to go. Well, that's it. Hopefully, your mail will be under control. If you have any questions, you can email them to me at doc at tuaw.com. And we are looking forward to continuing this series of how-to and tutorials. So if you have suggestions of something that you may want to learn more about, also leave it in the comments or send me an email. Don't forget to press the subscribe button to ensure you're up to date and press the like button so that we can continue to create these for you. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon. To Aloha.